Welcome to our mushroom farm. This may be your first time working at a mushroom farm, or you may have many years of experience. Either way, it's clear that each mushroom farm is different. However, our goals are the same everywhere. We all wish to provide a quality product for our customers. And by working together, we can do it as safely as possible. The Worker Protection Standard, or WPS, is a regulation issued by the Environmental Protection Agency, or EPA, that your employer must follow to help you be safe while you're working here. You should follow your employer's instructions. This video will tell you what to expect from your employer, and we will talk about easy steps that you should take to keep you protected from pesticides, where they may have been used and where their residues may be present. And that's why you're watching this program. There is little need for you to be concerned about your health and safety while you're here, as long as you follow the safety steps we'll be discussing. If you have any questions, make sure to ask your supervisor or the trainer who is here today. They're here to help you do your best work and to keep you out of harm's way. Ready? Good. Let's start with a couple definitions. Here at the Mushroom Farm, most of you will be considered either workers or handlers. Workers are employees who do hand tasks in crop areas, such as cultivating and harvesting. Most often, workers will be exposed to pesticide residues from contact with soil or plants. Exposure can also occur due to drift from nearby applications or even from water with pesticides in it that's used to irrigate crops. Workers and handlers might also be exposed to pesticide residues that can be found on benches, trays, and other machinery, including chemigation equipment. These residues might not be visible, so just because you can't see them does not mean that they are not there. Handlers are employees who are responsible for mixing and loading pesticides, applying pesticides to crops, or cleaning and repairing pesticide application equipment. Handlers are more likely to be exposed to pesticides directly as they mix and apply the products and must use extra caution in their tasks to limit that exposure. Employers are not permitted to use workers to mix, load, or apply pesticides or even assist in applications unless they are trained as handlers. The first part of our program applies to both workers and handlers, while the second part is strictly for handlers. While you are watching this program, feel free to ask any questions you may have about this information. Afterward, you will be required to sign a form that says you took this training. Again, don't hesitate to ask any questions you have about this information. It's for your own safety. If you wish to have a copy of the form once it's signed, your employer must provide one to you free of charge when you ask for it. The WPS training here at the Mushroom Farm is required each year and will most likely be the first thing you do as an employee, no matter how long you've been employed here. Even when using DVDs like this one, your trainer is required to be here to answer any of your concerns or questions. Trainers need to be qualified and the information has to be presented in a way that you can understand it. A couple more definitions you'll need to understand are pesticides and exposure. Pesticides are chemical materials, either synthetic or organic, used to control or eliminate various pests. Pests can be insects, weeds, mold, fungus, or rodents, anything that can damage our plants or crops. Pesticides, when used correctly, are effective tools in the battle to grow and produce quality crops. Because exposure to pesticides can make you sick, you should understand how they can enter your body and how you can reduce your exposure to them. It's important to follow the safety steps we will talk about today when it comes to the possibility of pesticide exposure. So how can we be exposed to a pesticide? How does it enter our body to make us sick? Exposure can happen from contacting a plant that has been treated. Most often, it occurs through contact with your skin or from touching your eye. You can be exposed by breathing in particles of dust or from drift. On rare occasions, people have consumed pesticides by eating or drinking them. 
Most exposures can be prevented by washing your hands thoroughly whenever possible, especially when you have been working with plants that have been treated. You should use the water, soap, and towels that your employer has to provide near your work area to wash when you leave the treated area. This is most important before you eat, drink, smoke, or put anything in or near your mouth or eyes. It's important, too, to wash your hands before you go to the bathroom. Pesticides from your hands can get on your sensitive skin and can be easily absorbed. Something else to be alert for are your employer's instructions for areas to stay away from. When pesticide applications are taking place, your employer must not direct you to enter the area being treated or to be near the application equipment. For applications that have already taken place, your employer is required to notify you of those applications by posting signs, like this one, or by telling you about the application. When you see this sign, do not go into this area until it comes down. It is not safe. The sign should look like this. It has a grim man with his hand up on a red background and a black circle around it. There might be a time when you are working in the crop area when a pesticide application is going on nearby. Even if you are outside the restricted entry area and the application exclusion zone, pesticide drift might move over the area that you are working in and you need to leave that area immediately so the pesticide cannot contact you. Even if you know that they are low toxicity pesticides, you do not want to allow contamination. Over time, even low toxicity pesticides can harm you. Sometimes you can develop sensitivity to pesticides even with low level exposures. Each pesticide carries potential hazards from exposure for workers, handlers, and their families, especially to children and pregnant women. These hazards can include acute effects or effects that happen quickly during or after exposure. Some examples are dizziness and rashes. Delayed effects, symptoms that may take some time to develop long after an exposure. Chronic effects, effects that happen as a result of small exposures over a long time period, perhaps as long as 10 or 20 years, including cancers and birth defects. And sensitization effects, these are symptoms, often a rash or breathing problems, that show up once your body has reached a certain level of exposure. This central location is where you can find information about how to do your work safely around pesticides. It must be at a location that you can access during regular hours. The pesticide application records will include the EPA registration number, active ingredients, the location and description of the application area, the day and time of its application, and the length of the REI, or Restricted Entry Interval. This REI is the amount of time that must pass before it is safe to re-enter an area after it's been treated with pesticides. In addition to pesticide application records, you should also have access to the safety data sheets or the SDS at the central location. The SDS have information about the hazards of pesticides used where you work. You'll also find pesticide safety information probably on a poster similar to this. Besides the reminders about ways to reduce your exposure, there will be contact numbers and addresses for an area hospital or medical center along with the contact information for the state lead agency, which in Pennsylvania will be your regional Pennsylvania Department of Agriculture. You can use the phone number for the state lead agency to report pesticide or WPS violations. Your employer must inform you where to find this information at the central location. You should make sure you learn its location right away. We talked earlier about washing your hands and the important role it plays in protecting you from pesticides. But what happens if you find yourself too far away from the main wash house, decontamination site, or a bathroom, and you come into contact with pesticides? Under the WPS, workers must have access to at least one gallon of water for washing, soap, and single-use towels within a quarter mile of the crop area they may be working in, when it has been less than 30 days since the last restricted entry interval expired in that crop area. 
Do not use irrigation water to wash with as it might have pesticides in it and definitely don't drink irrigation water. For handlers, the owner is required to provide at least three gallons of clean water, soap, and single-use towels at the mix and load site, as well as the area where they remove personal protective equipment and within a quarter mile of any application area. When you are done with work at the end of the day, wash thoroughly before going home. This is especially important for handlers. If possible, handlers should shower and change into clean clothing before going home. No matter what job you perform at the mushroom farm, if it must wait until you get home, make sure to shower and change into clean clothes as soon as you can. You should also avoid contact with your spouse or children until after you've showered and changed. Remember to take your work shoes or boots off before entering your home. There are additional ways that you can keep your family safe from being exposed to hazardous pesticides. Never take used pesticide containers home from work. No matter how well you feel they've been rinsed or how clean they appear, these containers are not safe to be used for any purpose. Even the smallest amounts of pesticide can make you or your family members very sick if you were to drink from one of these jugs. Personal protective equipment, or PPE, is another way to protect yourself from pesticides. If you handle pesticides, it is necessary for you to wear PPE as described on the product label. PPE may include coveralls, special gloves, chemical resistant boots, eye protection, and even dust or respirator masks to protect handlers when they are handling pesticides. Most workers will never need PPE unless they are part of an early entry group that is directed to work on a specific task in a treated area where the REI is still in effect. These workers must receive additional information and protections from their employer, which may include PPE. Early entry is only permitted for a few specific exceptions under the WPS. These workers may be provided with PPE for the duration of time to complete their assigned task. Do not take PPE home with you. Your employer must provide, maintain, and clean PPE. Dispose of damaged or heavily contaminated PPE. Like the pesticide containers, PPE may carry residues and should never be used in a home situation. If exposed, these residues can be particularly harmful to children because of their smaller body mass, as well as to pregnant women. Clothes that have pesticide residues on them can transfer those residues to your skin. Work clothes that you wear to protect yourself from dermal exposure should include long pants, long sleeves, and shoes with socks. These should be clean when you arrive for work each day. It is smart to keep your work clothes separate from the rest of your family laundry. Whoever handles the family laundry can wear gloves to help protect themselves from residues on clothing or should wash up after handling the laundry. Your work clothes should be washed in the hottest water possible. Then it is best to dry those work clothes by hanging them outside to dry in the sun. Early entry workers must first be shown what PPE they need and how to put it on and off. Their employer must also tell them under what exception to the REI that they are going in under, what their duties will be, and what limitations they are under. All early entry workers must be at least 18 years of age. We'll discuss more about handlers' responsibilities and PPE in the next part of our training. Occasionally, and in spite of everyone's best efforts, accidental exposures to pesticides can still occur. If you believe you have been exposed, but you don't have any symptoms, wash off as soon as possible. If your clothing has been exposed, take it off immediately and wash yourself thoroughly. Again, shower if possible. Be careful when removing your clothes to prevent getting pesticides in your eyes, face, or mouth. In case of an extreme situation, and when there is no other option, a nearby stream or pond may be used for an emergency decontamination. Make sure you wash thoroughly as soon as you can, wash your hair too, and put on clean clothes. If you get pesticides in your eyes, be sure to rinse them with clean water as quickly as possible to minimize possible long-term damage. If only one eye has been exposed, 
make sure to rinse that eye without contaminating the other eye. Rinse the affected eye for at least 15 minutes and then seek immediate medical care. If you have been exposed to a pesticide, you may have a headache or feel nauseated, feel dizzy, lightheaded, have a rash, or sweat more than usual. If you start to feel ill, the first thing you should do is notify your supervisor to ask for emergency assistance. Your employer must provide transportation for you to a medical facility and will be required to provide the EPA information about pesticides you may have been exposed to. Your employer must provide the SDS and the application and exposure information to the treating medical personnel. The SDS sheet at the central location will give first aid instructions. It's worth repeating that if you think you may be experiencing heat stress, try taking a few minutes in a safe, cool, or shaded area and get something cold to drink, preferably water. Loosen or remove extra layers of clothing or PPE like the worker shown here has done. Get as much air to cool yourself as possible. Try to have someone stay with you until you feel better. It's possible that you could find a coworker who's not feeling well or may even be unconscious because of a pesticide exposure. That person should be taken to a medical facility as soon as possible. Again, your best response is to get help from your employer immediately and to get the injured person to medical care. Be careful not to contaminate yourself. It is important that a person with proper training take care of the sick person. We can't emphasize enough that being alert and paying attention to assignments and the provided pesticide application information is the smartest way to stay safe and healthy on the job. If you need the pesticide application information or the safety data sheet, but you are not able to obtain it, ask for it from your employer. You may also designate a representative to ask for that for you. To do that, you must put in writing your name, your signature, the date of the designation, dates that you need the records from, and the name of your designated representative and their contact information, plus a statement that designates that person as your representative. The document must include a description of the specific information being requested to include the dates of the requested records and the type of work you were doing then. That designated representative must then give that to your employer. Well, that's about it for now. Let's take a quick look at the basic points we cover today. The Worker Protection Standard, or WPS, is a regulation issued by the Environmental Protection Agency that helps to keep you safe and healthy at work by requiring your boss to provide supplies and information related to minimizing your exposure to pesticides. You will be trained every year to be taught or reminded about the safety elements provided, as well as your responsibility to understand and apply the information you've been taught. Your employer will provide a central location at work where you can read and learn all about the pesticides in use, where and when they've been applied, information about their active ingredients, as well as contact and address information for the closest medical center or hospital in case of an exposure. In addition to the safety data sheets, pesticide labels can provide information related to their safe handling, as well as signal words and basic first aid information. Protect yourself and your family by paying attention to signs and areas of potential exposure. Keep children and non-working family away from pesticide-treated areas. Don't use pesticide containers for anything other than storing pesticides properly. Keep your work clothes separate from regular family laundry. Wash thoroughly at the end of the day or shower and change into clean clothes either at a wash station or at home before coming into contact with your spouse or other family members. If you think you've been exposed to pesticides or see someone else who has, get help from your supervisor immediately. They will be able to determine the best way to treat the situation. Don't try to help someone who may be unconscious. Let those who are trained and wearing the proper PPE handle the situation. Most employers are fair and concerned for your safety, but just in case, your employer cannot retaliate against you for wanting to follow the WPS or for reporting pesticide violations. Once more, there's little reason to be afraid at work, but there is a great value in being alert 
and understanding how your own actions can keep you safe and healthy at work today and every day. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or concerns about the information we just shared, now is the time to ask your boss or trainer. Get the answers you need in order to do your job to the best of your ability. Have a great day.